Hi guys, I'm Sally with Owl Crate Jr. and I'm here today with a behind the scenes unboxing of our September Legends of the Deep box. I had so much fun putting this one together and I'm very excited to share it all with you and uh, tell you all about how it came to be. So let's dive straight in. All right, here we go. Ooh, so beautiful, blue inside, just like the ocean. There we go. So first things first on the top of the box, we have our awesome uh, Legends of the Deep spoiler card illustrated by Melanie Demmer. We've got this uh, gigantic squid, some sort of uh, sea monster here, maybe like, like a sea dog it looks like. It's got a bit of a puppy vibe. And an anglerfish, scare, one of the scariest beasts in the ocean, and a beautiful mermaid, and then a great big whale eye behind. I love, love, love this illustration. And then on the back, all the goodies that we are about to explore plus we've got the squid again and a whole different green monster and some fish and some other slimy ocean dwellers so i won't read the back of the card because that would spoil everything that i'm about to show you so let's move on to the next item so first off i will show you one of the items that we did a sneak peek for and that is an exclusive tea blend from riddle's tea shop um we love Riddle's Tea, we work with them whenever we can. It seems like a perfect opportunity to make a gillyweed themed tea. Gillyweed, of course, as you know, uh, is the, uh, the, the weed that Harry Potter um, has some help learning, helps him breathe underwater in the, uh, one of the challenges for the Tri Triwizard Tournament. So this is a delicious um, peppermint chocolate uh, blend that they put together. We always make sure that the teas that we include in the junior boxes are totally decaf, just herbal based, so that uh, anyone can enjoy them. Won't stunt anybody's growth. This one is so yummy. I really love peppermint tea. I think it's great hot or cold. Um, so it has peppermint, rooibos, never quite sure how to say that, but I think it's rooibos, uh, cocoa nibs, natural chocolate mint flavor, and peppermint leaves. Two different kinds of mint in there, I believe. It's gluten-free, it's sugar-free, it is nut-free, and it is dairy-free. So uh, we want to let people with, with dietary restrictions always accommodate them as best as possible. But Julie from Riddles, as you can see here, and I will also uh, show you the sketches here, um, designed this fantastic sort of textbook style uh, illustration for the Gillyweed. Um, so it says, you know, decaf tea blend, has a mint chocolatey flavor, helps grow gills, and uh, one sprig lasts one hour. And I just love the sort of like botanical, um, uh, like scientific illustration design behind it. So great job with that riddles. And of course, with a loose leaf tea, we wanna give you some way to enjoy it uh, without having the, uh, the loose leaf tea bits go all over your cup. So we also included this hilarious little silicone shark tea strainer. Um, pops in two like this. You put about a teaspoon of uh, the th either this tea blend or whichever other one you like in there. Pop them back together. And then his, uh, his jaws clip over the side of a mug and sits right in the water. And uh, it all infuses out through the bottom half. And then he, uh, he just looks so adorable on there. Um, and then you can enjoy your tea. Uh, these are all food-based silicone, totally food safe, and uh, we just love them. With this box, I wanted to do a sort of blend of both um, imaginary uh, sea creatures and underwater things. So we have the gillyweed in that example, and then real things that actually live in the deep um, and are legendary in their just bizarre realness. So things like the anglerfish that we saw on the postcard and gigantic sharks and things like a narwhal. We included this adorable little narwhal gel pen. Oop, the end pops right off. It's got this lovely uh, uh, little narrow nib so you can get nice fine writing. Um, and, oh, it's so cute. I don't know if you can see that there. But uh, it is a narwhal, which is a real whale, but it's kind of got a bit of a unicorn twist to it. So I think this covers both bases. Um, I am such a sucker for these little gel pens. Um, they're my favorite thing to write with. They're great for 
um, taking notes or keeping your journal or, uh, or whatever you like. So I hope that you like this one too. Add it to your uh, stationery collection. The next item is something that I am so, so just like honored that we were able to include. Um, and that is this beautiful poster in a, uh, an owl crate tube, which I just find very satisfying. Um, I've seen lots of people sort of turning these into like telescopes or uh, kaleidoscopes or all kinds of things. So I always encourage recycling packaging whenever possible. So I'm just happy about the little owl crate tube. But more importantly than that, uh, inside we included this gorgeous, oops, is it upside down? No. This gorgeous poster. So there we have it. This is illustrated by Owen Davey, who is truly one of my favorite illustrators. Um, he has a series of books, um, picture books. There's uh, The first one that I learned about is Smart About Sharks. He's got Fanatical About Frogs, Bonkers for Beetles, Crazy for Cats. Um, and they're these fantastic illustrated um, picture books, uh, just with all of the things you need to know about all of these creatures, um, in these, this beautiful sort of muted, um, color palette that is, is, uh, very unique to him. Um, he has also done, uh, exclusive stuff for Pottermore. He, you know, he's illustrated Dumbledore and everybody else. If you've been to Pottermore and sort of like looked up the, the, you know, the history of Hogwarts or um, the uh, the properties of Gillyweed, perhaps. A lot of those illustrations that are on the website are from Owen. Um, he also designed a very fun game that I had to take off my phone because I was enjoying it a little bit too much uh, called Two Dot. That is a just really beautiful interface and uh, a neat like connect the dots type uh, game. So if you're looking for a new iPhone game, check that one out. So in this illustration that uh, that Owen very kindly licensed to us, um, this originally appeared in the book Smart About Sharks, which you should all go check out from your library or buy so you have your very own copy of. Um, this image features a Dakawaka, which I had never heard of before, which is a figure from Fijian folklore. He's a half man, half shark god that protects fishermen while at sea. Legend has it that once he tried to conquer an island but was confronted by an octopus goddess who grabbed Dakawaka with her many arms and squeezed him very tight, defeated. He begged for his life and promised to become the protector of the surrounding waters instead. So that's what you have in this poster, this um, beautiful high quality nine by 12 poster. I would, I hope that uh, to see it framed on some people's walls, I know that is what I will be doing with mine. Um, but this uh, shows both of the gods in their animal form fighting each other. Um, so there you go, you got a beautiful art print, you learn something new about folklore, and uh, and yeah, you have this beautiful print from one of my favorite illustrators. So thank you again to Owen for, uh, for working with us on that. I was just thrilled about it. So the next item in our box is our monthly collectible pin. This is also illustrated by Melanie and goes with the spoiler postcard that we looked at at the beginning, and this features a creepy uh, angler fish. These are the nasty guys that live in the deepest, darkest ocean and have the bioluminescent uh, light that hangs off the front of their head, top of their head, um, and attracts um, all kinds of other uh, smaller fish that live that, uh, that deep. And then once they get close up to this light, they snap them up in their jaws um, with their terrifying sharp teeth. Um, Melanie managed to make this guy look pretty cute, but they're still pretty scary too, which is a fun mix. Um, and this, as it says right along the edge, is box number 32. So if you have been with us all along, you will now have 32 of these cute little pins. We have two more items to show you before we get to the book of the month. This one is, I love it so much. It is a mermaid, uh, a reading mermaid. This is illustrated by Laura Trinder, who is a fantastic illustrator. She has a book coming out in January, um, sorry, in March. Um, so she is a, well, at least a double threat. Um, I'm sure that she has something that can turn it into a triple threat. But 
Uh, this is uh, a little vampire mermaid who is reading a copy of Jaws. I love it. Um, and she's got a little sort of chorus of jellyfish right around her. I don't know if they're uh, keeping her company or maybe like even providing light or something for her. I'm not sure. Who knows what goes on under the ocean? Um, but it's, it's just, it's so cute. Uh, and it, as always with our stickers, it's got a lovely sort of waterproof finish. So um, they they really stand up to a lot. They, uh, they last a long time, whether you put it on your water bottle or a notebook or your laptop or whatever. We hope you love it. Laura was so great to work with. We had never worked with her before, um, but uh, she has a whole series of um, reading mermaids. That's like one of the things that she she does all the time. So it is always just so much fun uh, to have artists that come back with a bunch of different sketches. It's uh, It kind of makes my job more difficult because a lot of the time it's very hard to narrow it down to your favorite. But here are the ones that Laura first sent us um, before we uh, we narrowed it down to the the mermaid with the tiny little fangs reading Jaws. And before we get to our book of the month, we included a second book this month, and this is a uh, just a really fun little graphic novel, um, The Yeti Files, Attack of the Kraken. Uh, we included another Yeti Files book uh, in the February 2018 box that we featured Arlo Finch in. Um, that was sort of all about like cryptozoology and uh, yetis and and uh their cousins this one all takes place under the sea um in the underwater city of atlantis uh atlantis is in trouble but blizz richards this is blizz richards he's great and his team of cryptids are ready to help the merfolk claim that the legendary kraken um you can see some of the kraken's tentacles here uh is responsible for attacks on atlantis but blizz thinks something about their story smells a little fishy they're so much fun. I love the end papers. Look at those. Those are so great. Um, it's uh, it's got like a whole storyline and and characters that uh, that go from book to book. You don't really need to read them in order. This is actually book three, um, but uh, they're just they're hilarious and they have um, some real life facts about things. Uh, you know, they talk a little bit about like the legend of the Bermuda Triangle and things like that, and a little bit about um, some underwater science and uh, and um, various legends like the Lost City of Atlantis. But it definitely puts its own uh, its own spin on things, and it's just great. So we really love this series from Kevin Sherry. And finally, last but certainly not least, is our book of the month, and that is Malamander by Thomas Taylor, illustrated by Tom Booth. Holy smokes, I can't stop talking about this book. It is fantastic. First of all, look at that cover with that, you know, metallic, creepy eye there that just kind of flashes and winks at you. Um, Okay, I don't even know where to begin with this book. It was such, such a great story. Um, the, uh, the plot is, um, it takes place in uh, this seaside town that uh, you know is, is bustling with people during the summer, but in the winter, um, the, uh, the, the tourist population disappears and it's just the townspeople and it's foggy and wet and uh, and just creepy. It is called Eerie on Sea, um, and uh, it is a town full of funny characters. Um, our main character is Herbert Lemon. He is the official lost and founder of the um, of the Grand Nautilus Hotel. So his job is to keep track of all of the things that have been lost. Um, in the hotel and keep a meticulous inventory of them so that when people come to claim them they know exactly where he knows just where to look on the shelf. So in the very first chapter of this book um, a very unexpected uh, thing shows up in The Lost and Found and that is a girl named Violet Parma who sneaks in and is hiding from a very scary man with a hook for a hand um, and uh, it turns out that she was left at the hotel when she was just a baby 
um, and her parents have been missing ever since and she is determined to find out where they are and what has happened to them. Um, and she, uh, she drags Herbert Lemon along for the ride, who is not a naturally adventurous type. Um, so yeah, they go off on this adventure to, um, to track down her parents. He is not convinced that they, um, still exist. Um, but they also get tangled up in, um, the legend of this town, that there is this beast that lives off the coast of Erion Sea called the Melamander. Um, and, uh, this beast lays a, a magical egg and, uh, everyone is always trying to find this egg and capture this monster. Um, and, uh, it's sort of, it's sort of driven everybody crazy for, for years and years. Um, it was just, it was everything that I want in an adventure book, in a, in a middle grade story. It is funny. It is smart. It has hilarious characters. Yeah. It's just, oh my goodness. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I love this book so much. So not only is this book just fantastic, uh, a fantastic read aloud, fantastic independent read, just a great, great story. Um, it is full of beautiful illustrations from, uh, by Tom Booth. So it starts as every great book should with a map. Um, and, uh, they've all got these beautiful chapter header illustrations as well. Um, but we also have full page, um, find a couple for you here, full page illustrations that bring the characters to life. This is the, the man with the hook for a hand. Um, and, uh, you get to, uh, there's, there's Violet crawling through the window of the Lost and Foundry for the first time. Um, it just, it, it helps bring to life an already incredible story. Um, Oh, I just can't wait to read book two. There will be a book two um, called Gargantus. So along with this beautiful book, we were very happy to include a signed book plate by Thomas Taylor. It's got the little, oops, I had it upside down there. It's got the little Malamander illustration in the bottom there, as well as a bookmark that uh, features that, uh, that very scary eye from the cover, and then a picture of the Malamander on the other side, and a letter from Thomas Taylor. If you, uh, if you recognize the name Thomas Taylor, by the way, he is the illustrator for the original covers of Harry Potter. So not only is he a great author, but uh, he's a wonderful illustrator as well. Um, and he wrote you this letter just, uh, just for our subscribers. It says, Dear Visitor to Erie on Sea, as a child, I always loved spending time in seaside towns with their ice cream stalls and bright sea seafront attractions. But it was only when I came to live in one and stay there all year round that I found out the winter truth behind summer fun. You see, there is a secret life to seaside towns, a world you only discover if you're there when the tourists go home and the nights grow long and the mist creeps up the streets and peers through your windows like a ghost. It's a world of nearly empty hotels, strangers walking alone on the beach, and boarded up fairground rides. A world of strange possibilities where even the most bizarre legend suddenly seems as if it might just be true. These are the thoughts that inspired me to write Malamander. I hope they also inspire you to open this book, pull your coat warmly around you, and step into a tale of mystery, monsters, and magic. With, with eerie best wishes, Thomas Taylor. Fantastic. If you have already read this as fast as I did, I would love to hear your thoughts about it. You can leave those in the comments below. Uh, I really could talk about this book all the live long day. So we have just two pieces left here. We have our monthly magazine and our sneak peek for our October theme. Our monthly magazine uh, features a an interview with Thomas Taylor, some great books to read if you um, have gobbled this story up and need more sort of in a similar um, in the similar vein. I definitely recommend the series of unfortunate events if you haven't read those already. Nevermore, um, it has a very similar fantasy vibe to it. And the Mysterious Benedict Society, another great series. 
There's also a Malamander inspired crossword puzzle, an interview with Owen Davey who designed that wonderful shark poster, um, and our photo challenge um, prompts. This actually is over now, but uh, you can check out our Instagram account to see who won this month and uh, to get the details of our upcoming one whenever you might be watching this. Um, and then some information about our October book. So our October theme is robots. Uh, as of the recording of this video, this box is still available. So you can go to alcratejr.com to order your own box. Um, but uh, I have to say, the September box and the October box really back-to-back -back winners. Uh, this October one is going to be, I think our fullest, like highest value box to date. Um, it is really packed with with great stuff. Um, so it says, oil your gears and update your operating systems. You'll want to be in tip-top reading condition for next month's book. Our October pick is fast-paced, funny, and full of big-hearted adventure. It's perfect for fans of the Wild Robot, Amulet, Iron Giant, and Wally. Um, We've given a couple sneak peeks for this already. We're going to be including uh, an enamel pin designed by Anusha Syed, who has done all kinds of beautiful, th beautiful things for us before. This one will be inspired by one of our very favorite uh, fictional robots. Um, there is also a really neat STEM building kit by a company called uh, The Offbits that um, uh, is was inspired by just sort of like the the little bits and bobs that you find around your house like washers and uh and screws and things like that and they have um made little creatures with them that you can build and then you can also build build the kit up um with with other things that you may have around your house really awesome sort of broad imagination building kit i am just such a huge robot fan and uh I think it's it's really neat to be able to include a bit of uh, sci-fi in the middle grade world because it doesn't come up as often as uh, as fantasy. I think so. Uh, yeah, I uh, I really think that you guys are gonna love our October book. Um, I know I certainly did. So if you liked everything that you just saw, I'm happy to tell you that we do still have some of the September boxes available in our shop. So you can go pick yourself up a Legends of the Deep box. Um, you can go to shop.owlcrate.com to find that. Um, and if you are looking forward to our October robot box, you can go to owlcratejr.com and pick one of those up until October 21st. Thank you so much for watching. I really love being able to talk to you guys and tell you all about how these boxes come together. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the, in the uh, comments below and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more bookish videos every single week. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye.